we lived in a school bus on Colfax, and my dad worked at one of these gas stations, Sinclair's down in like East Aurora, and that's where we went to school. But the bus down to downtown was like the main freedom for all of us kids in Aurora. We would all get on the bus. Back then you could get on a bus. Your parents would give you 25 cents, 50 cents. You could go round trip, spend two hours downtown at night, like hanging out with your friends, smoking weed, riding skateboards, and then head back up to you know Aurora at night, go to sleep, do the same thing again the next day. Cool. Well, I said I grew up in East Aurora, or part of my life in East Aurora. I've been all over the place, but I went to Aurora Central High School. Um, it's at Peoria and Colfax. We take the bus all the way downtown every day to ride skateboards. Um, not a lot of kids from my high school are still around, man. Um, I have a few guys I went to high school with that are, you know, doing all right, that, that kick ass, and I still will get to hang out with those guys once in a while. But, uh, you know, it's it was rough in the 90s in Colorado. They called it the summer of violence. Like, probably there's more than a dozen of my close friends that I skateboarded with that at least died in that, that summer just of gun violence and gang violence, you know? It was like 89 through 94, it was fucked. And uh, everyone had AK-47s. I don't know how kids were getting AK-47s here in Denver. Like my school uh, homecoming got shot up by like AK-47s and uh, Tech 9s and uh, what is it, M14s, and like shot up two cop cars in front of my school during homecoming, or not homecoming, uh, it's the first one that you have every year. Is it homecoming? I think it is. That's like the, the first dance of the year at school, you know? We were inside on the ground, like, with our hands over our heads trying not to get shot. And that was in, uh, what, like, 88, you know? And uh, I came from a violent background. My parents were firing guns off around me all the time, like, out of cars and shit. Like, we always shot guns. It was kind of exciting. It was kind of, like, fucked up that it was exciting. We were like, oh, shit, because then all my homies that were gang members went like out looking for these dudes, you know? And then a bunch of people died, you know? And it was just like, it was just a crazy time. Like all of us were kind of involved with that. Like we we're all like as a young white kid in that school, like I, yeah, I wanted to be a crip too, you know? Like all my homies that were scary gangsters that were exciting people were, were crip gang, you know? And that was Aurora at the time when I was a kid. And then my last day of my school, one of my homies shot my other homie in front of me. And I was like, I'm not coming back to this motherfucker. That was my sophomore year. I went and skateboarded all summer and then just didn't go back to school my junior year. And I tried to go back to school there and it was just, it was all violence. Like you fight every day at school. You like, everyone's trying to hurt each other, kill each other. Kids are trying to kill each other. It's fucked up, man. It's like some survival of the fittest, fittest car, like carnal, weird fucking hunter gatherer shit that the, like trying to weed out the weak or something. But it's like wild animals in high schools, dude. It's fucking gnarly. And uh, I ended up getting my GED from Emily Griffith at Opportunity School, which is still a school in Colorado, and they still help a lot of kids. And I was able to just go in the workforce and, and, and be on Colfax more, <laughs> which is like kind of what supported me in, in everything, like being able to ride skateboards. I met a lot of people from other neighborhoods. This was like the conduit. We'd all meet up at one spot. We'd get to wherever we were going through the bus lines from downtown. So. Mostly everything was on this corridor, like either out west or east, and we would stay stick to it because the buses ran later. You know, anywhere else back then in the 80s and 90s in Denver, the buses stopped running like after six at night. You Colfax bus ran until 10. You were safe, but everywhere else was you weren't getting home. You were walking, ride a bike, you know, to like Littleton, you're fucked. So. Um, a lot of the kids that were still around from that were, were kids that we all stuck together, grew together. I guess we're kind of like a little gang, you know? Like, we all helped each other. We all slept on each other's couches, like, picked each other up when we were down, like, bought each other lunch, you know? Like, helped each other get, like, whatever we needed to sell to make money. But, I mean, I still have a lot of those friends. They're still on Colfax. I see bums every day on Colfax that have been here for 40 years. That some of, I mean, it's been hard the last couple of years they've all been dying. It's been weird. but. I've known guys that were still bums on Colfax 40 years later. And they enjoyed it, and they're just part, that was their thing. And they're actually kind of cool guys, even though they're fucking bums. You know, they're kind of all right dudes. So, and you, I don't know. It's always pulled me back. I moved to San Francisco for nine years, and I, I loved it there. But like, every time I came here, I was at, you know, one of these spots on Colfax getting food, Pete's behind us, Satire Lounge, all time favorite for me. But just so much stuff. It's just, it's hard to even like, it's hard to even like get all of it in one interview because you'd have to like drive from Golden 
to fucking Kansas and I could tell you a story about each block, you know? It's just because I've been here that long, you know? And, and, and my parents were a part of this, like, street life. My dad sold drugs, my mom was a prostitute. We were on Colfax, in the bars, in the tattoo shops, like, at the Krishna Temple getting free food. I lived in the Denver Rescue Mission for a while, like, Catholic charities and shit. Like, I just talked to one of my homies, Pete, that his family moved here from Nebraska the same year we moved back from South Dakota. And uh, we were in the Samaritan House shelter together as families. And he's actually doing all right. He's in Kansas. And I was able to, like, chat with him for a little while. His brother's in, fe in the penitentiary for life. You know, it's, they were like two of my Colfax homies that like I, I've kept like over my whole life, you know, that are like good dudes, but you know, their, their dad left, their mom was homeless. They ended up like on the streets, you know. We lived in a tent together at Cherry Creek Reservoir for a little while with our parents. People like to go camping. I say, live in a tent and go to school for a while and see how you like camping, you know? It's just not, it's not the same anymore. So I would say that church and skateboarding and I, I was in the church when I was a kid for a long time and like, you know, got into God. And that brought me in, be, into being spiritual, all right? So I found Buddhism and like transcendental kind of like spirituality, some science shit, you know? I found science, honestly. Skateboarding has been the biggest thing for me though because I was good at it, because I was athletic and I could fight and I fought for everything. So I could throw myself on the ground all day skateboarding and get up and take it and I got good at that thing so people kind of gave me a hand up whereas like some kids they don't really get that you know like it was like kind of like being like maybe a pro f at football but on a way lower level I was good enough where people were giving me a hand up so I, I learned how to be better at stuff polish my edges and, and be a better person because of skateboarding you know um, I was around a lot of people that gave me a lot of chances and, I, and it helped me grow. And I still ride skateboards this day because of it, but I would say that's one of the things that saved my life. Besides this like community of kids in Denver. Yes. I would say that church and skateboarding. And I, I was in the church when I was a kid for a long time and like, you know, got into God. And that brought me in, be, into being spiritual, all right? So I found Buddhism and like transcendental kind of like spirituality some science shit, you know? I found science, honestly. Skateboarding has been the biggest thing for me though, because I was good at it, because I was athletic, and I could fight, and I fought for everything. So I could throw myself on the ground all day skateboarding and get up and take it, and I got good at that thing, so people kind of gave me a hand up, whereas like some kids, they don't really get that, you know? Like it was like kind of like being like maybe a pro f at football, but on a way lower level. I was good enough where people were giving me a hand up, so I, I learned how to, be better at stuff, polish my edges, and, and be a better person because of skateboarding, you know? Um, I was around a lot of people that gave me a lot of chances, and, I, and it helped me grow. And I still ride skateboards this day because of it, but I would say that's one of the things that saved my life. Besides this, like, community of kids in Denver, you guys can walk by, man, it's all good. We're catching the real Colfax, so. <laughs> that's people walking. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, skateboarding saved my life. That's, that's all it was. That's why I went to San Francisco. I worked in skateboarding forever. I built these skate parks through my church. Uh, I got involved with the city, worked for the city for a while. Came back here to skateboard and fucking work. And there's a lot of skateboard parks here now. All my friends I grew up with skateboarding are still here, most of them, you know? Like, a big contingent of them, like the good guys, you know? And, uh, that's what kept me out of, I think that's what kept me out of trouble because even my brother, he's in and out of prison. My, my dad went to prison. I just, I just didn't want that life. You know, my parents, my family showed me that life and I just, I don't like being locked up. I'm claustrophobic as a motherfucker. Like, and uh, I think having Colfax helped me build a stronger moral fiber because I was able to see the darker side of shit, you know? Watching your mom sell her pussy on the streets isn't like an easy thing for any kid. You didn't know it was wrong when you're that age, you know? So you just, you just, you know, it's just normal. And then you get around your friends and their mom's like cooking fucking cakes and shit. And dad's taking care of them. And you're like, oh, that's a different lifestyle than mine, you know? So you, you can either go hard the wrong way or go hard the right way, you know? I mean, I, I was trained to fight. I was going to fight for something. So I just fought to be better than that, you know, and it's been, it's been good for me.
So, and I mean, I'm still rough around the edges. Motherfuckers can't handle how I talk or who I am or the roughness or my attitude or, or they think I'm full of shit or whatever. But I'm fucking still here. What are they doing, you know? I'm doing shit, you know? I'm still fighting. Let's go to the skate park and see what you got, you know? <laughs> like, so. So, yeah. Future Colfax is like unwritten, man, because like you, all these rich motherfuckers can come here and spend all the money they want on this street. But if it lasts and the bottom don't fall out, that'll just be some other vacant buildings for rent down the road that they're gonna try to rent for too much because you rich motherfuckers put too much into them and lost your ass. I've seen it happen in San Francisco, seen it happen in Colorado already. This will be the second time. It's not, that's the only constant. You know, the bottom falls out every time, you know? I'm surprised it hasn't faster under this current like political regime. It ain't gotten better, you know? So, I mean, the future of Colfax, it's Colfax, it's a, it's, a, it's a commercial street, but you go down to Civic Center right there on Broadway, it's fucking dangerous right now. You go over there uh, between Yosemite and Havana, it's fucking dangerous. Don't go over there. You know, that's fucking Mad Max over there and that shit. Like, there's still places white people shouldn't be hanging out. <laughs> or normal people whatever you want to call yourself, because you'll get good, you'll get got, you'll get took. That's Colfax, you know? There are people out here trying to hustle people, you know? And this is the place for it, you know? So, uh, and Colfax will always be here. It's not going nowhere, man. <laughs> <laughs>